My name is Michael Schwartz. I am a professional musician, play all different kinds of music, lately mostly jazz. Uh, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my first experiences playing the music of Reverend Gary Davis and how I came to meet him. I'm a musician, been playing the guitar for at least 60 years, probably a little longer than that. Um, I guess I should start out by saying when I was about six years old, my parents moved our family from New York City down to Miami, Florida. And my dad bought a bar in the area of Miami called Liberty City, which is a black ghetto. And every week or two, the company that serviced his jukebox would bring his bring new records for his jukebox and they would take the old ones and throw them in the garbage can so he decided to take some of those records home and give them to me and my brother to play with they were 45 rpm records some of them were brightly colored vinyl plastic and that was my first exposure to a lot of great music i loved the music of nat king cole and earl bostic and some of the calypso records that were popular at the time and I also had an interesting experience back then. Uh, one day, uh, walking around at the beach, I was probably six or seven, and I walked over and I got a drink from the water fountain, and all of a sudden, all these people started screaming and yelling at me that I was drinking from the colored water fountain. Well, I tried to explain to them that the water was not colored, it was just regular water, and uh, that was my introduction to... Uh, living in the South in the 1950s. Anyway, uh, my family didn't stay in Florida very long, only about a year and a half, and we moved back to New York. So when I was 11 or 12, I had, a, I had an uncle who was sort of a shady character. He used to, uh, I think he used to traffic in stolen goods. And he showed up one day and gave me a guitar for my birthday. It was a cheap, junky old guitar, but... It was what got me started, and I started trying to play uh, the music I heard. Mostly uh, Kingston Trio was really popular, and I was trying to learn how to play Tom Dooley. At the time, there was a... Uh, somebody who had made records in the 30s named Reverend Gary Davis, who was originally from South Carolina, but he had moved to New York in the 1940s and was living in Harlem in absolute dire poverty, making a living by playing on street corners on subways with a tin cup and preaching in little storefront churches. Um, so he started getting a little bit more recognition in the 60s and uh, I got to hear him play a few times. And one of the things he would do at the end of every one of his performances, he would announce his telephone number from the stage and tell everybody that he was available for guitar lessons. So I copied down his phone number and uh, it took me a few years to get up the nerve to call him, but I finally did and I made an appointment to go see him for my first guitar lesson. So I took the subway up to Harlem from my home in Brooklyn, which was a pretty long trip. It was at least an hour on the subway to uh, a part of Harlem I'd never been to before. There was an elevated subway line that went up there. I think it probably was the A train. And uh, in those days, that was kind of a, a scary thing to do for a white Jewish kid from Brooklyn. Uh, you didn't see too many white people in those neighborhoods in those days other than cops or social workers. So I went up there to take my first lesson uh, Gary Davis was 
uh, teaching out of a small record store. It was a small storefront in Harlem. Um, Gary Davis was a blind man, and uh, he had taught himself this really unique style of guitar playing that pretty much no one else had ever come up with before. When I first got to the store, as I was about to walk in, there were a couple of neighborhood kids running out of the doorway, and I heard him screaming in the back of the store and saw him waving a shotgun around. Um, so the idea of a blind man waving a shotgun scared the daylights out of me. I was already fairly scared and intimidated just being up there in the first place, but this was more than I knew I knew what to do with. And I remember, I remember shouting at him, Reverend Davis, don't shoot. It's your guitar student. Your guitar lesson is here. I learned fairly quickly that uh, taking guitar lessons from him was was not the best way for me to learn. It was it was pretty intimidating. He was kind of a imposing guy. He um, smoked big cigars. He had his eyes when he wasn't wearing glasses. His eyes were kind of all milky white colored, and often uh, liquid was dripping down from them sometimes. He was kind of a scary-looking character. He only had a few teeth in his mouth. Um, so I found myself more comfortable just helping him out as best I could, driving him around and staying. I'd stay and visit at his house. Uh, I found out that he really liked uh, blueberry pie, so I would often try to bring him a blueberry pie before uh, I came over. Read about Samson about his birth he was the strongest man that ever walked on earth one day while samson was a walking along he looked on the ground he spied an old jaw bone he raised that bone god knows over his head and when he got through moving ten thousand were dead if I had my way, if I had my way in this wicked world, if I had my way, I would tear this old building down. Okay, when it comes to Gary Davis, there are certain pieces of his, certain songs that he did that were just amazing guitar showpieces and also his singing was just so powerful because he was really believing this he believed this stuff in, deep in his heart he was preaching this music as if he was in front of a church congregation his version of Samson and Delilah is one of those tunes that um, uh, I can just barely scratch the surface of what he was shave doing. my head just as clean as your hand and my strength be that of a natural man good God if I had my way Gary Davis used to say that he uh, he learned this technique because he was trying to court a young woman at one point and uh, she was on the front porch with her and her mother was in the next room so if the guitar playing stopped. She would come out to make sure that no hanky panky was going on. So he learned how to play the guitar with one hand. While he could uh, pursue other interests with his other hand. My background was. I was kind of, my, my family was sort of upper middle class Jewish family living in Brooklyn, New York in a pretty much Jewish neighborhood. Most, most just about everybody I knew was Jewish. I went to Jewish schools until I was in high school. 
and all my friends and family were Jewish. Hardly knew anybody who wasn't. When I met Gary Davis, it was really, I was overcome by how his values as a Christian were so important to him, and I was welcomed into his home, and uh, it was really a striking difference for me to see that. Um, despite the fact that he was incredibly poor and had hardly anything, he was so open and giving, and a guitar lesson with him would last pretty much as long as you wanted to stay at his house. He would be happy to show you anything you wanted to do. He would invite you for dinner and even invite you to spend the night if you wanted to. Some of the themes of Gary Davis's music were just gigantic biblical themes, songs about death, songs about meeting God in heaven, songs about the devil. Death don't have no mercy in this land. No, death don't have no mercy in this land. Come to your house and he won't stay long. You look in the bed and find somebody be gone. Death don't have no mercy in this land. No death don't ever take no vacation in this land. Death don't take no vacation. Land. He'll come to your house and he won't stay long. Look in your bed, find your mother is gone. Death don't take no vacation in this land. I also got to accompany uh, Gary Davis to some of his church performances, which were amazing uh, experiences. Him getting up in front of a small congregation of devoted people, and by the time he got going, people were standing on their chairs, playing tambourines, screaming and jumping up and down. It was just an amazing uh, thing to see. and especially for somebody like me who had never experienced anything like that before. As I was walking down by the sea I heard a bunch of angels just talking to me What you reckon they said to me Said my sins are forgiven and my soul's The last time I saw Gary Davis was in sometime in 1969. I went to I went over to his house. I brought him a blueberry pie, as was my custom, and we sat down at the table and uh, started eating it. And uh, I knew I was going to be moving to Carol uh, to California fairly soon, and uh, I didn't realize it, but this was going this was the last time I ever saw him. He died. Uh, just a few years later, in the early 70s. The, th the thing that I take with me from, from my experience and my time with Gary Davis is his incredible passionate feeling that he imbued with everything he did and his incredible Christian spirit, which uh, I had heard about and read about but never really met anybody 
like him before. And to me, um, his conviction and his passion about what he was doing is something that I try to carry with me to this day. I try to play everything. When I'm playing, play as if it's my last day on earth. I may never get to play another note. I want this no I want this music to be that important to me, no matter where, where I am. Candy man saw 